we're here with Natalie Maloney with Grandview Appraisals. And we were just talking that uh, we've been working together for a number of years. Um, and right now, I have a bunch of questions for you. We really appreciate you taking the time because a lot of interest in what, what do things, what's going to happen with the real estate market? What does it mean for folks that are in the middle of a transaction? And my, what might it mean for going forward? Um, and so the biggest question I'm getting right now is, um, is there an adjustment for a coronavirus adjustment because of the circumstances? Now, I've actually seen appraisals where they did do an adjustment, a reduction in value. So if you could speak to that. Because that's not something I've done. Um, there isn't anything in the market right now that tells us we should be taking a reduction. I'm not seeing any um, reduction in prices. I don't see people dumping homes. The listings that are out there seem to support where the market is right now. So when I got back, I reached out, hey, I'm, I'm here have an agent ask me about reductions for uh, the coronavirus. And what I'm getting is, yeah, we're hearing that too, but we're not doing that. So Good. as far as I'm concerned and what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing, there's no reason for that right now. Um, it's hard to predict what going to be in the future so all you do is you watch your comps you watch where your listings are and kind of uh, see what the trends are for the future but right now that's very difficult to predict right mm -hmm. so the whole appraisal process Natalie I know that there's a specific process that you all have to follow that there are guidelines and then there is some, there are some areas where it's subjective and you can apply certain things within your judgment. And, um, and, and sometimes it's just missed. I mean, there are things like square footage and permits and things that go a little interesting. Um, and, and that's where we have this appeal process because we've had a lot of uh, folks when they don't like the end result, whether it's our buyer or our seller, it's how do we get another one? So if you could just speak to that, um, I just want to talk about what most people will do. The first thing they'll do is they'll look at the two houses down the street that sold for $200 a square foot. They'll take their square footage, apply that times $200 a square foot and come up there with their value. Right. Can you demystify why that doesn't work? <laughs> right. Sure. Well, first of all, we uh, don't work price per square foot. We take the house as a whole. We break it down. Um, we look at comps that are similar in square footage, similar in lot size, quality of construction, so forth. Um, and then we give each amenity its own adjustment. So if you say the house down the street sold for 200 a square foot, well, did that house down the street, was it highly upgraded? Did it have this backyard oasis? Were, were there things in that home that were not similar to my house? Um, right. So yeah, that's, that's not really, the way we work as appraisers. And since that's where the bottom line for value comes from, once you're buying a home and you're going to get a loan on it, um, you have to look at things differently. You have to look at what kind of a value does a pool bring to that community. I have a pool, the house down the street doesn't. Um, and you know, you want to stay within the range of the community. Uh, I've seen as um, inventory gets lower, prices are getting higher and higher and almost to the point to where we can't appraise them at what people are wanting to buy them for. So mine has a pool, that one does not. It's the same size lot, same year built, same square footage, may even be the exact same model. Right. So they say, okay, it was $50,000 for my pool. How do you come up with an adjustment with everything else the same, mm -hmm. but the pool? Right. And we spent fifty thousand dollars on our pool, and the appraiser is going to give us ten. Um, you you do have to try to find some comps in the area that have pools. What what was the market willing to pay for that pool? Um, if you're you know in a, in a highly custom neighborhood, that pool is probably highly upgraded. Um, you may see adjustments at twenty five, thirty, fifty thousand dollars, depending on what's in that yard. In your typical cookie cutter house, you're probably looking at about a ten thousand dollar adjustment. And again, okay. yeah, you do want to. So it's going to change in the price range: a two hundred thousand dollar home, a six hundred thousand right. dollar home, a million dollar home. They're going to have yeah. different adjustments. Yeah, based and on neighborhood and location as well. So if you're in Sun City, um, you're in Sun Lakes. Your pools are probably not going to give you that big 
of a value because a lot of those people vacate during the summer. So that's not mm -hmm. as um, much of an amenity that's in demand. If you're in a lower income area, those pools tend to be not such good quality, not very well maintained. They probably um, are something that somebody may not even want to maintain. So again, a, a lower value in those areas. So is there ever a time when here's the amount of money I paid for this upgrade and I'm proving it to you, mm -hmm. does it ever matter? My opinion, other appraisers may be different, but I don't really care what the cost was because it's what is the market going to bear? What is the buyer going to pay for that? You know, you gutted your kitchen, whether you spent 25000 or 60000 you have to figure out what that is worth in that market. Now, not to say that a higher end kitchen doesn't warrant a higher right. value because it does. It absolutely does. Right. Uh, everything we do is based on um, comparison, based on substitution. If you know, if we can't have this house, what what is that house going for? And so you, we really do have to search for something quite similar. I think that's helpful. A lot of times, uh, sellers aren't understanding why I paid fifty thousand dollars for my kitchen remodel. Why don't I get fifty thousand dollars in value? Correct. And you know, some may, if you're, if you're in an area where you have a, a fairly original home and you've gone and put a lot of money into upgrading it, and you're in an area where there are highly upgraded homes, for instance, Arcadia, right? You can put a lot of money into your home and probably get most of that money back. And then there are other areas, uh, there's a term that we call it, the obsolescence factor. You over-improve, you put so much money in, but for the area, you're never going to get it out. And that's really hard to understand. Whenever you compare, when we say same neighborhood, what is the geographic constraint of, you know, two miles down the road, when is that okay and when is it not okay? Yeah. With the inventory being as low as it is, I have personally been going back in time, go back, going further out in distance because it's harder to find those comps within your neighborhood. Right. If you are in, let's just say you're in a community like Warner Ranch, try to find your comp within that Warner Ranch community. But if you can't, you have plenty of other planned right. communities that are similar in uh, construction, age, that you can, you can kind of go off and uh, travel a little bit across. Um, but when you have something that is so highly upgraded and you can kind of go out a little bit further just to see, is, is this so over-improved that something in a similar community didn't sell for this? Same quality of construction, same age, same design, multi-level home. You may have to go out a mile or two to find something mm. similar. But for okay. a good reason, not just because we want to have a certain value, you go out because you want to compare to the, the spectacular backyard or the spectacular upgrade something similar. So let's say it is a similar neighborhood and it is within the geographic um, uh, parameters sure. and one has a four bedroom and one has a three bedroom and let's say they're really close in square footage. Mm -hmm. What happens there? We kind of look at comps to see does the market um, warrant an adjustment for that fourth bedroom? Is that fourth bedroom really something somebody's willing to pay 10000 more for? 15,000 more, 5,000 more. What, again, is the market reaction to that fourth bedroom? Now, let's say that other comp has three bedrooms and a den. Typically, not an adjustment there because the, the functionality of that right. den is very similar to a bedroom. But that fourth bedroom depends. It depends on your market. So I'm reminding anybody who's watching, if you've heard your agent say, it depends, this is why. <laughs> why. This is our favorite, our favorite statement. It all depends. It's all subjective. It's all out there based on what your market's doing and what the comps are right. telling you. Well, there's some complexity to it that seems like it's very simple, but it really is not. It, you know, housing in general, it seems like it's um, simple. Right. But it actually has a lot of layers of complexity. And this just speaks to one of them. So how about something like new flooring and old flooring? I'm just trying to hit some of the things that, you know, somebody's going to spend ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, depending on the size of the home, put in new flooring. Mm -hmm. Could be similar floor plan, 
what kind of adjustment would you give for flooring? Let's say it's a 2,500 square foot house. Because that's the other th thing. It just depends on the size of the home sure, as to sure. how much the adjustment would be. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, if we have a fairly original home and all we upgraded was the flooring compared to a house next door, same model, fairly original, no upgrade to the flooring. I'm going to look for a comp that's got something similar, but my, my gut is if we're talking about 300 thousand dollar price range maybe five thousand dollars for upgraded flooring I and mean, that's certainly just a, a number because i have to prove that and that's right that's the thing that people don't always understand when they read appraisals is that we're not writing them for you as the agent or you as the buyer we're writing them for the lender and the lender has to look at what we're adjusting and how much sense it makes we have to tell a story so we wouldn't necessarily go across the board and adjust Five thousand dollars because you have flooring, new flooring. So we're going to go and we're going to look for a comp that has new flooring to kind of see again what is the market willing to pay for a house with the new flooring. Right. So, in general, if somebody was uh, considering, do I redo my kitchens and baths? Those are the big areas: flooring, kitchens, and baths. Right. Absolutely. If one bathroom is done and nothing else is versus everything is done. How does that? Depends on how well that one bathroom was redone. You know, did we throw in a, a Costco vanity, put in some new light fixtures and faucets and call that upgraded? Did we gut the shower? Did we, you know, depends on what you did. But that one bathroom compared to a whole house, that one bathroom's not going to bring you a whole lot of value because um, there's still a whole house that needs to be done yeah so the other um, issue is lot size a lot of folks I've got a much bigger yard than anybody else in my neighborhood so I'm going to get a lot more money <laughs> right and that's one of the reasons why you would travel to you know as far out as you can if you have an extraordinarily large lot for your community now I'm not saying my lot's 10,000 and yours is eight. That Some people do see that as a big difference, but in our eyes, that, that may warrant a small adjustment, but that's not, that's not a huge difference. Um, you're in an area where you have a big cul-de-sac lot that most houses in the community are 7,000 and you're 15. I'm gonna travel out in distance to find a comp that's got that same lot size. And then what, what is that lot size worth? What's somebody, again, willing to pay for that extra land maybe $2 a square foot, maybe five, you know, depending on, again, what market you're in and how much that land is worth. So yeah, yeah lot size does bring value. But again, if you're on a, a large lot that backs a major road, your land's going to be worth probably a little bit lower, lower because of your locational factors too. Yeah. And that brings up a good point of when you do back up to either a really nice something, a golf course, a green belt, a park, uh, a preserve versus, or some water, um, or, it, you know, that can bring money. And then there's the, you back up to a road. So how do you figure how much for those? Same as anything else, we look for comps that have the same locational factors. Something that backs a major road. Again, another reason to travel, to find a comp that's got similar locational factors. So folks that, um, let's say when they bought the home, you know, builders put a high premium on the lots right. when, you know, it's a big cul-de-sac or it's a good location or it's larger um, and they may have a 10, 20, even $80,000 lot premium just before they build. Right. And then um, I've had sellers that are assuming that that lot premium transfers over when you go to resell. Can you speak to that? 